Let's kick things off today with a quiz. First thing that comes to mind, what's the point of an SUV? Well, that's simple. Be all things to all people. But riddle me this, what if there were an SUV that by design was trying to be off-putting to the majority, yet in the process be incredibly desirable to the very few? Okay, so to answer this riddle of sorts, we have to look back in time at performance SUVs, the variety specifically von Deutschland, where they add a lot of power and generally change the driving dynamics. But in the process, they've never made a vehicle that is off-putting to the folks that need some practicality. It's performance, but there's still certain basic needs that are met. Yeah, there's the SE turbo hybrid Cayennes that are crazy fast, but they still do what the SUV should do. Then we drove the X5M, what, about a month ago, and realized, yeah, it can store things and move people, but it's very, very raw. So, of course, they follow that up with something that is less you in the SUV occasion. This is the X6M, and it does all the same things. The setup is the same. It's multi-link in the back, double wishbone in the front, crazy brakes, but more importantly, it's got that 4.4 twin turbocharged V8, and they've shoehorned that electric motor between the engine and transmission in that bell housing. In the process, adding 12 horsepower, that's really not the issue, 147 pounds of torque. So this, a very powerful vehicle, is a mild hybrid. Now, yes, that is indeed the biggest change on offer here, but like the X5M, the nose has been updated, so it looks a little bit different. Yet everything else that made the equation work previously has made the trip into 2024, like the extra structural bits on the top of the engine and underneath the vehicle to make it a stronger body shell. And then that all-wheel drive system, not like the M5 where you can turn off the torque to the front, but they have a four-wheel drive sport mode where there's more torque going to the rear of the vehicle. Performance figures, that somewhat impressive for a vehicle this size. Like the X5M, it's exactly the same. 3.7 to 60, 155 miles an hour, or with the right trip down the options list, 177 miles an hour. Now, yes, technically, this is a hybrid. If one were being pedantic, it's a mild hybrid, but there is no reason for us to discuss fuel economy because it is abysmal. That said, a favor. If you see value in these episodes, I would greatly appreciate if you click like, leave a comment, subscribe, but most importantly, share these episodes with your friends. Why the YouTube algorithm a complete and utter bitch. <laughs>
So it may be fast, but we still have to discuss practicality. And that would start with the wagon wheels behind me. Uh, what you are looking at is staggered, but staggered with 21s in the front, 22s in the back. Now with vehicles like this, you and I very frequently talk about ride quality. Uh, here, this is nothing like any other SUV. It is a very um, uh, rough experience for ride quality. For folks like me, that is a positive, but for the folks that are going to cart the rugrats around, that wheel size is indeed something to think about. For the life of me, I do not understand why you guys take immense pleasure out of my pain, but we'll do it anyway. Uh, this somewhat practical, that's where I would sit a six footer and I have some knee room. However, this being an SUV with less U, that roof line is a bit lower and I'd swear the hip point for the seat in the back is lower, which makes me feel like I'm kind of a second class citizen. I don't have that stadium seating. I can't see over the people in front of me, which is what I would want in an SUV. And then the final frontier for an SUV with less U, that would be the business end. And here it took me a very long time to realize that these, not just the performance versions, but anything with this sloping arse end, they're not meant for folks who are looking for the practicality of a traditional SUV. This is for folks that were trying to replace sedans. So in this case, it would be replacing like an E-Class AMG or like an M5, just folks who maybe are a bit older or looking for something that has some practicality. And speaking of practicality, believe it or not, there's a hook back here. So if you put your shopping bags in it, it's not like a Turkish bazaar. And then there's a 12 volt outlet back here. Okay, now let's see you and I get a bit more aggressive and have a discussion about driving dynamics. And here is where one of the bigger differences slap you across the face. These always were sharp, but now it's more sharp. And I don't want to say raw on the driving dynamics department, but it's a bit to the point of beyond what most people could stomach. Like you get that guy that walks into a BMW, Porsche, or Mercedes deal and they say, I want the best one, or I want the fastest one out there. And the salesman points to like an AMG, an M car, or a turbo Porsche. And the guy buys it thinking he's got the best one and it's really bragging rights, doesn't really care about how it drives. This is the kind of car where that person would keep their receipt, go back in and say they want a refund because they wouldn't like the way it drives. This is, this is for folks who buy like GT cars. This is for folks who buy the more performance version of a sports car, yet they want something sort of practical, something to please the wife. It's that hard, it's that sharp, and it's that different in this update from the previous version of the X6M. Like for example, this doesn't have the active roll stabilization we see in like a GLS 63 or other vehicles of that ilk. And with the old fashioned tuning, even with 5,500 pounds, notice like my head isn't moving around. I don't feel all these different planes of motion as I'm pushing the vehicle. Really, I think the better way to put it is it's just more hardcore. So I would caution anyone that would think, hey man, I want a new X5 or X6M. I, I think you gotta ask yourself, do I want something that far up the driving dynamic spectrum? Because I think this is a good thing. It ain't for everybody. So rather than playing a round of our favorite game, the options game, let's have a discussion about the difference in money between this and an X5M, perhaps even a Porsche Cayenne. Uh, that would start with the base price. This is $5,000 more than the more practical X5M. I'd like to point out that has more metal than this in the back, $127,200. Then you look at that paint. Uh, to me, it looks like purple, but instead it's called Wildberry. That is an additional $5,000. I think I would pass on that. The interior is lovely. It's leather, but the colors changed. It's ivory, two-tone with an atlas gray. It does work well with the Wildberry, although not my cup of tea. Then there's an executive package in this car that adds the massaging seats in the front, the heated front and rear seats, as well as the heated and cooled cup holders. That is $3,100. Then a very important option, the M driver's package that raises the VMAX from 155 to 177, well worth $2,500. Then of course, 
If you're gonna be in for a penny, you gotta be in for a pound. You gotta get the kick in stereo. And in this case, the Bowers and Wilkin, it's very good. $3,400. The only other thing we have to pay extra for in terms of options, the brakes. So this one has the M Sport brakes, but specifically the M Sport compound brakes. That's an additional $650. Why is that optional on a $127,000 vehicle? Let's fix that. Uh, then the only other thing we actually have to write a check for is the destination and handling, which is surprisingly cheap for a $130,000 car. $995 because it comes from the exotic port of call of Greenville, Spartanburg, South Carolina. Yes, this is made in the good old US of A, which brings us to a total price of $146,345. Now, of course, that begs the question, how does that compare money-wise to a Cayenne? Well, remember the 2024 Cayenne S we drove, the one with the updated four liter twin turbocharged V8. That one had a hell of a lot of options, something like 170 grand if we took it from Euro to dollars. But really the transaction price in the US of most of them will be about 140 to 160,000 minus any crazy options. But then is this comparable to the Cayenne S or the coming Turbo S, that car, that's gonna be over 200 grand. So really the beauty is in the eye of the beholder in this case, or at least the one that wants to write the biggest check. Let's have a discussion about the brakes. We really didn't focus on that in the X5M. Uh, both this and the X5M, the brakes steal very large. 15.6 in the front, 15 in the back. But the fascinating aspect about this this, at least the weight, doesn't feel like it's overpowering these very large brakes. In fact, the brakes, they can kind of cash the checks the engine writes. So in other words, they've kind of right-sized the braking to the thrust, now improved thrust of the vehicle, which means you can drive this more aggressively with confidence. I've gone down on record as saying BMW, the best steel rotor performance brake option full stop even better than a Porsche and this is coming from a Porsche guy but these the big change you don't feel fade especially in a vehicle that's 5,500 pounds I'm pounding this thing up and down Moto Canyon here and there isn't an instance where the brakes just give up because they're overheated or it just says you know what, I'm checking out for the day because your weight is too high and it's too much. Put another way, this is a great example of the difference between an M Sport and a full fat M, or really a full fat M and other performance cars. BMW, yeah, you might get to the point where I don't like their design or I don't like where they're going in some of their direction on some vehicles. But you can't argue the fact that it's not just about adding power in an M car, it's adding balance to every aspect of the additional power. That's what's different here. Now this is the point of the episode where I normally pose the question, what have we learned today? And here I don't believe it'll be a surprise to anyone, but this exactly the same experience as the revised X5M that we have already driven, which is to say something that is rough, that is raw, that is very much in your face, frankly, something that is indeed off-putting. And in this case, that's not a bad thing because it's trying to appeal to the car freaks like you and I. BMW has already said there's probably not going to be a non-competition. I'm thinking, if I'm reading the tea leaves correctly, the X5, the M50, whatever the hell they call it, that's probably taking the place of the old non-competition until they change that. So that brings us to the wish list. And, and here... I'm gonna ask for the same thing that I asked for in the X5M, and that is some practicality. Now, before you crucify me, the practicality is only around town. I'd like to see a plug-in hybrid version of this, one that is a battery big enough for say 50 or so miles around town. Now, before you crucify me on price, no one is already complaining that this could be 150 grand, so an extra, what, 10 grand for the battery? I don't think that would have an impact on overall sales, but it would change the usability and make this like a dual purpose vehicle. You take this thing out on roads like we did today and just absolutely rip your face off, or around town, there is some practicality without having to engage the ridiculous fuel economy of this engine. But I'm just one man, and this point of the episode, I'll turn around to you guys. 
to a point in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV Onward, Moto Man TV Onward, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, if you found value in this episode, I'd highly suggest you watch our episode with the Mercedes GLE 450 plug-in. Yeah, not a direct competitor to this because it has more U and it has a four cylinder engine, so not nearly as fast. But that one has a battery that is usable for 50 or more miles as we tested in that episode. You can watch that episode here or until I see you in the next episode. Bis später.